Welcome to the Limitless Being Podcast. I am Danielle Sharkey, your host, here to be a guide on this journey of life. This is a space cultivated with the intentions of connection, vulnerability, spirituality, limitless knowledge, explorative conversations, and unlimited potential. I am here to spread love while activating freedom within the collective consciousness. I am a digital nomad, an entrepreneur, and a magnetic spiritual being here to help you activate your power so that you can cultivate the life of your dreams. This container I have created is a safe space for us all to have conversations which lead us toward liberation, acceptance, and radical love of your self. If you have found this podcast, it is by no accident. You have been guided here because there's a part of you who's ready to stop making excuses and live the life you've imagined. So join me and my guests here every Thursday. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Limitless Being podcast. Today, I have a very, very special guest, Hegina Osilva. I've been following her on TikTok for over a year now. She is a spiritual business mentor, a psychic medium, a medicine woman, and she works with spiritual entrepreneurs to help them call in their next level of leadership, to call in more wealth and more impact, and she helps them to build multiple six-figure businesses. I am so grateful to have you here. Again, like I said, I've been following you for quite a while, and we've been like connected on and off here and there, and I just am so drawn to your energy. You have such a beautiful spirit, such a beautiful soul. And what I really admire in you is the fact that, number one, you're a go-getter. Obviously, you're growing this incredible, incredible, impactful New Earth business. You know, you're a New Earth leader. And simultaneously, you're having this immense amount of success while still honoring your rhythms and your feminine nature and being a cyclical being and being a cyclical human. So I definitely want to touch on that today. Welcome to the show. And again, so grateful for your time and for your energy. Yes, Danielle, of course. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy to be here. I love when, you know, we make that initial connection on social media land, TikTok, and then now we're here. Well, it was Instagram (laughs) and then now we're here. I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, good. That's kind of the life, right? Like as being an intuitive being, we're like, oh, we know this person is special. We're going to connect with them one day. And then, of course, it unfolds exactly as it should. So I just really want to share your story. I really would love to open the conversation with a little more background information as to who you are and how you became this you know, super, 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 super successful and impactful business, spiritual business mentor. Yes. Okay. I love telling my story. Um, So I would say the story really begins when I was younger. And I feel like you'll resonate with this too. There was always something inside of me that just knew I was here to do something. Like I vividly remember being four or five years old, having these like, downloads where I'm like oh I'm not just here to do whatever (laughs) but there's a reason for all of this in fact I think I had my first existential crisis at like seven years (laughs) old I mean we're not being able to sleep that night but of course I had to go through my own period of forgetting like most of us light workers star seeing dealers need to and in that period I learned a lot of course I would say I finally woke up again It was after I graduated from UCLA University Mm -hmm. and I was living in LA, trying to pursue acting. So I thought that's what I wanted for the longest time. I used to tell everyone like, oh, I'm going to win an Oscar. Uh, And I remember just being very anxious, very depressed, living in this tiny apartment. mm -hmm. And I felt like if that was really my dream and what I wanted, it would feel better and it didn't feel good. And so during this year that I had graduated from UCLA, at this point, it was the the year 2018. There was something that was keeping me sane. And it was this connection to God, universe, source, whatever you identify with calling it. And I was starting to meditate. I was starting to get into those practices. 
But it came to the point where I knew I had to do something big. And I got this little light bulb moment that said, you need to go somewhere. You need to interrupt this pattern, get into a new environment. And so I decided to go on a five-month backpacking trip solo through Southeast Asia. And I've been traveling my whole life, but I've never traveled alone. And I never had traveled with no plans. So the only plan I made was to do yoga teacher training school for a month. And then after that, I said, I'm going to let the universe decide, the universe take me. And boy, did that happen. (laughs) So the yoga teacher training was perfect kickoff because we started meditating for 60 minutes a day. We were doing yoga three hours a day, all of the tools and practices you need to come back home to who you really are, Mm. right? Like, let's forget the noise. Let's forget all of the chaos that day to day and let's come home to And during that month, I had some of the most existential experiences. You would think I was working with plant medicine, but no, it was all just through meditation, through Vipassana. And then the rest of the trip was absolutely magical. I was journaling every day. I was manifesting like no other. It was really an experience for me to learn how to surrender and trust. And that was what that trip was about because I had no plans. It was about listening to the nudges following that and it took me on all of these magical adventures I met so many incredible teachers and healers I had so many lessons and at the end of the trip I ended up in Bali I mean Bali is definitely a hot spot now and it was a little bit back then but not to the (laughs) to the same degree and as I was there I ended up meeting a life coach and this life coach really helped me put into perspective if the path I was currently on pre this trip was what I really wanted Mm. or was my soul asking me to go in a different direction the answer was the latter (laughs) and so I ended up making big changes I went back to LA I sold everything this story is crazy I literally sold everything I owned I only kept two suitcases and it was while liberating and that began my nomadic journey it began my business I started as a life coach before I went into business mentorship of course And within this story, too, in the last two years, I was then introduced to ayahuasca as the Amazon rainforest, which brings in a whole nother leg into the journey. Yeah. I had another profound experience that has shaped me and my business and my leadership. And yeah, now I'm here. (laughs) Obviously, there's a bunch of little moments in between, but right now I'm here (laughs) doing this thing, helping people, serving people awakening them but also helping starseeds light workers healers know that they can have a successful business yeah. that you can serve and also make a living by doing that wow that is so beautiful and such a magical story it's you know it makes me think of like this definitely is obviously not your first incarnation right because as a human right because you the undertone of that whole story, and I know it's it's your entire life summarized into a few minutes, right? So it's I'm sure it doesn't give it the justice that it needs, but you know the the undertone of all of that that I really feel in my soul is this deep connection to God, whatever God is for you, right? You say the universe, I say the universe as well. I believe that you know it's outside of religious context, but for you. There, it seems like you've had that strong connection and that really, really profound intuition that, you know, I want to say we all have access to, but I also want to say a lot of us have been shut down to it. Would you say that that is that little piece that's been present for you, that like deep connection and knowing that there's kind of like a force outside of yourself that's always been guiding you? A hundred percent. Even as you're saying this, I'm getting goosebumps and It's funny that you mentioned this because I just got a reading. It was an intuitive guide. She did a reading Mm -hmm. for me a month ago and she reads people's auras and she was like, oh, that's interesting. I'm like, what, what, what? (laughs) And she, she, she was reading my crown chakra and she said, you have a very strong connection to the cosmic universe, like the strongest that I've ever seen in a, in a while. And I was, oh, that's cool. Right. Cause sometimes people have really earthly connections. They have you know connections to the fairies or whatever there's so many different unique like unique parts of our gifts 
And I was like, that confirms it because I do remember being really young. I have a very good memory being like three or four, being present and remembering this this connection to source. Wow. I had to explain it. But yeah, it, it's wild. I'm like, oh, OK, come back to that because we're always going to forget, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think I think we are born with that openness to that that source that energy but I think it really depends on your upbringing and how you were nurtured and loved as a child and you know if your parents or your family supported that feeling and nurtured that or helped you to shut that down right so I'm curious for you because you know a lot of my clients a lot of my my followers know like I'm the only spiritual one in my family the only one and so it's been like a very have to figure it out myself lonely also rebel against what everybody else is saying path but I wonder if it's different for you like how was that nourished in your life so that you leaned into trusting your gifts and and those messages more yes I definitely agree with you just before I answer that question about we all have that ability that connection that's why we love kids I'm obsessed with kids because I'm like, oh, source energy, it's so there. <laughs> I haven't forgotten. I love kids so much. Mm-hmm. I used to be a nanny. But to answer your question, I'm not the only spiritual one in my family. I'm very blessed. Mm. But I would say it was, so I have a brother and a sister. They're both older. I would say the spark really began with my sister and I, and then we kind of spread it out mm-hmm. to our family in current times. So growing up, I mean, I had a wonderful childhood and I was lucky that my parents were always spiritual, not very religious. Like even though we went to Catholic church, I did grow up hearing things like my dad would always tell us, you know, you chose us. Your soul chose us. Like I remember being wow. five years old saying that he he like dreamt about me before I was even born, um, two years before I was born. I was a surprise baby. And so we've always had that connection. My mom has always been super intuitive. I remember her telling me stories of just like witchy things happening. But I feel like through my sister and I going through our spiritual awakening first, um, it then ripple effect into our family and really accelerated all of that for everyone. Um, So I am very blessed. It wasn't super like tenfold, but there were little nuanced things that I was raised with that allowed me to embrace it and which I believe shaped my my future spiritual awakening but yeah my sister and I are always joking around we're like damn we're always doing the work the leg work here we got to be the first one <laughs> we're the first ones left to see it but now my parents are like super open they know I work with mushroom yeah. ayahuasca I'm super supportive with all of that yeah, that's beautiful. Well, the divine feminine leads energetically and spiritually, right? So it makes sense. Like you open yourself up to that and you have, you know, another powerhouse divine feminine, your sister in your life to do that work with. And then that just like, that's like the ancestral healing as a light worker, right? It radiates through your entire lineage and ultimately you lead by example. So that's, that's really beautiful. There is something apart, like it's not going away. So I have to ask this question, a little part of your story. You said you had an existential crisis at seven years old. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? <laughs> yeah, I just remember sitting or I was laying in my bed and I remember asking the question, where was I before this? And I remember freaking out. Mm-hmm. I was like, I just remember that one question making me feel really weird. And then I remember having very trippy dreams that night. (laughs) That's all that I can really remember. Um, But I just remember that being very profound in in me kind of starting to ask these bigger questions. Wow. At seven years old. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I thought that was normal, though. I feel like a lot of kids have that where they're just like, where was I before? What was, what was the life before this one? Yeah, yeah, that's that's really beautiful. Your awakening started really, really young. And just like you said, you had those seeds kind of from your family and from your parents that that nurtured that. So now you you fully embody being a spiritual being, being a spiritual leader, right? What does spirituality mean to you, really? Because there's so many different definitions, but for you personally, what does it mean? That's a really good question. 
I feel like it is navigating life with the understanding that you are an infinite being living a temporary human existence. And I'm not the first one pers- person to ever say that little quote there, but I really feel like that encapsulates it. It's knowing even if you forget and you have periods of forgetting, you're all always able to come back home to that anchor. Mm-hmm. The the knowing that you are source energy, that you in fact are God, universe, spirit, good, whatever you identify with calling it. And letting that be the concept that lives in your heart that you can come home to again and again. I really feel like that's that's it. Because if you have that understanding, then you know that I am you, you are me, we are all one. It completely shifts and shapes your perception of the world. And you know that when you shift your perception of the world, the world itself actually shifts. Uh, that is so beautiful. I just saw like this vision in my mind, just, you know, thinking and remembering, right? Because it's a constant having to come back to remembering because we have the the ego self. We have the lower self that exists within our human existence. And of course, we have the higher self, which I believe you have done a lot of work to continue to align with over and over and over again. And obviously you're leading others to do that, but it's still, you know, there's, there's triggers, right? Like, let's be honest, there's triggers in life. There's painful moments. You can wake up one day, like the full moon this last Saturday, my Lord, um, that was super intense for me. And it's difficult in those moments to remember your power and to remember wait, I actually am source incarnated into this vessel and I can create whatever I want, right? So I like to get to those questions of like realness. And I know authenticity is a huge pillar for you. I can just see it. Um, But when you're in those moments where let's say you get triggered or you just wake up and you have a shitty day and you're like, I don't know why I'm feeling this way, but it is what it is. How do you bring yourself back? to that remembrance of your power when you're inevitably when it's inevitably tested in this life Mm -hmm. oh my gosh yes this is another great question like danielle you are crushing (laughs) Um, it is inevitable i actually talk about this a lot with my audience with my clients it's this constant oscillation between who you are and who you are not And so those moments, and they're going to happen so many times in life. In fact, I would say I just got out of one. I went through like a couple month period where it was louder than usual. Just the shadows, the triggers, the limiting belief. Oh my gosh, you can't do this. The ego, right? The parts of you that want to keep you safe, that want to keep you stagnant. There's nothing wrong with it. But in order to really move through it and be able to come back to who you really are, it's exactly what you said. It's acceptance, it's total acceptance and surrender that that is what is alive for you right now. And the way that I like to explain it with my clients too, because it will come up in sessions, right? Someone's like, oh, this shadow is so alive. Well, the shadow only has power if it's kept in the dark. Oftentimes that shadow is more like a little newborn baby that's just crying and screaming and just simply wants to be recognized and have space held for them. So if you can actually identify what the trigger, what the shadow is, bring it to light, actually give it a chance to express itself, getting really curious about what it is, what it's saying. So sometimes I'll even do this in in the shower. If I'm noticing like a shadow coming up, I'm like, I'll just speak it out loud. What is this shadow saying? You're stupid. Nothing's going to work. Like whatever that voice wants to say. And I, I say it out loud. People, if they were to walk in on me and be like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? <laughs> but by getting it out, right, it just gives it a chance. And then through that, you can actually transmute it, move that energy in your in your energetic and physical vessel and come back into your heart in a deeper way. And so it's actually a gift when we have those moments of forgetting. It serves as such a paradox that it it slingshots you into an elevated understanding of who you are. Mm -hmm. And so starting to see it as a gift as well. So even those couple of months where I was in this like whole shadow, now that I'm out the other side, I'm like, wow, thank you spirit source for allowing me to go through that because I have such a deeper understanding of who I am now Mm -hmm. showed me the contrast which allowed me to heal transmute and reaffirm who I actually am wow that is 
so profound. And also, <laughs> that is such a master level. <laughs> you know, I I relate to almost like everything that you're saying around that is is the acknowledgement of the darkness, the acknowledgement of the shadow within yourself, the subconscious mind that inevitably holds you know fears and limiting beliefs and traumas and pain right the the shadow is the part of ourselves that you know its intention is to keep us safe whatever that that means right even though it's it's illogical it doesn't make sense it wants to keep you it wants to ha- have you remain the same because it doesn't know that that next level is actually going to bring you goodness and peace and fulfillment and abundance. It doesn't know what's coming. And so I feel like the shadow really, really intervenes and and um, is loud when you're about to hit a new level, when you're about to receive a new manifestation. And I just want to really highlight your process again for listeners around loving and embracing and even speaking it out loud like I think what we have to also accept is like as a light worker we are go- like embrace your crazy you know embrace your crazy like people that are living the nine to five in the matrix whatever you want to call it they're going to look at us and be like are they okay <laughs> you know but like we are more than okay we just embrace these multi-layered multi-faceted aspects of self and we allow them to exist and we give them the space and the room to to express, which inevitably helps us to move through these deeper emotions at a more rapid rate, right? And so just honoring what is coming up when it's coming up and giving yourself the space, which I know is a privilege if you have the space to express, is so key to the healing my question for you, because we're talking about shadow work and we're talking about light work, and I want to I wanna make this accessible to everybody. You and I, we've been on this journey for a while, right? So light worker, let's talk about that. When did that, that word come into your reality and what does it mean for you to give a definition to it? Yeah, I would say for me, a light worker is someone who has a previous understanding that I was speaking about in terms of spirituality. They know that we are all one. They know what this reality really is. They've woken up. And to me, it's it's the person who has chosen to reincarnate onto this planet with the specific purpose of helping raise the consciousness mm. of other people. So by you fulfilling your highest joys, your highest desires by experiencing the richness of who you are and who you are not, that's simply enough. <laughs> like that enough is alone to have an impact on people around you. And not every light worker is here to, you know, be famous or touch millions of people. It can be as simple as being that one lighthouse in your community, in your immediate family that has this ability to create change within those small communities. And that's enough, right? Because small changes are what create massive change. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's really just about that. They've awakened, they're connected to the spirituality and they're living a life that fulfills a mission, something that they feel called to do and they actually do it. That's so beautiful. Yeah, I like how you said a lighthouse in mm-hmm. their community. I really see that, you know, we're both living the, the nomadic life, right? And I feel like I'm guided to where I'm supposed to go next, right? And then it's almost as if like you receive a mission in those places that you that you go to, right? Whether that mission is to just like rest and transmute or to help somebody specifically. I see this visual of all of us kind of like, planted all over the world and we're shining our lights and we're we're emitting the frequency of of freedom right and liberation because we did that within ourselves and i just see that that spread across this planet and like you said it doesn't matter how grand or how minute like your community is or your following is or your outreach is your energy and signing up to do this work is more than enough 
that's really beautiful. And then the acknowledgement of shadow work being a part of being a light worker, being a part of being this energetically influential being. The shadow is inevitably a part of that. So when did that healing process of shadow work, of subconscious work, when was that brought into your reality? Yes. And I'm glad you asked this because it creates that differentiation between, ah, just everything's love and light. Yeah. Hi. I'm like, no, that's so mm-hmm. toxic. Mm-hmm. I'm the same way. Yeah. yeah, we have to be able to embrace the darkness, the shadow in order to hold the light. So for me, I, I would say it really came into play with the beginning of the spiritual awakening in 2018 because there was so much unlearning that needed to happen in order for me to shine my light, to be fully in my mission and purpose. And it was painful having to go through that, really look at the mirror and say, wow, this is who I am right now, right? There's this like layers to who we are. Mm -hmm. And I didn't necessarily like all of the aspects. And so getting really real and honest with myself and curious and then committing to, to visiting the pain, to going there, to choose to face it instead of numbing out, right? There's so many people, unfortunately, in society who don't have the tools, they don't have the understanding, the awareness, and that's where every weekend they're just going out and partying and whatever it is, numbing, watching Netflix, and just choosing to ignore it. And mm-hmm. I've been rarely, I'm sure we're going to get into this even in more depth, but I've been very fortunate to have had so many mentors and guides to help me as well as plant medicine. Plant medicine has been such a huge catalyst for doing a lot of this shadow work to the point where it has helped me collapse time. Something that would have maybe taken me 10 years to heal in talk therapy, I've been able to heal in two years with ayahuasca. (laughs) Wow. Wow. That's so beautiful. Yeah. I think Embracing the pain, that's a lesson that I that I really leaned into actually through my first ayahuasca ceremony that was this year. Um, the medicine has had been calling me for seven years since I was 21 and I, I did not do it. I felt like I was in, you know, such a dark, dark place in my early 20s that I was like terrified to do it, even though I felt that call so strongly. And I think that's that's so essential is to lean into the pain and understand that in human existence, pain is, it's, it's a part of life, right? And knowing that like with love and with connection and with all of these beautiful aspects, there can be pain and there can be triggering and there can be hurt, but you have to accept that in order to receive the light side of it, right? You have to embrace that in order to receive the opposite. And I, it reminds me of this quote and I'm probably going to butcher it, but I'll just, I'll just kind of give you the, the gist. It's like, in order to receive that high level of light, you have to equally experience that lower level of darkness. And the more darkness you experience, the more light you can reach for something along those lines. And that's what I see in this journey. And the, the light workers, you yourself as a healer, as a psychic medium, like, you have the courage to go into that depth, right? You know it's going to hurt. You know there's going to be emotions that a part of you resists or wants to to resist in feeling, but ultimately it's going to bring you a new level. It's like this this graph of like, if you want this growth, you got to go down first and then you go back up a little bit higher, right? <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's always like that, the roller coaster up and down. Yeah. But you're still going up. The trajectory trajectory is still up. There's just a bunch of dips and highs and lows. Mm. So beautiful. So having mentors and coaches and healers that you work with is obviously one of your core values. It's something that you continue to invest in. And you, how long have you been investing in those types of individuals in your life? I would say five years now. Yeah, five years. Wow. And as you said, it is a priority because you can't do this alone. 
It takes a village. It really does. Mm -hmm. And it takes courage to know what your gap is and to surrender and allow someone to guide you through it. Mm -hmm. I'd much rather be in the presence of someone who has embodied the lessons so that I can, I don't really like to say this, but I guess it's the best way to to explain it, like receive the codes from that person and to help me collapse time around it. So maybe they went through this lesson. It took 10 years. I work with them. They've already been able to embody it. They can share the wisdom, the knowledge with me, pass it on, and I'm able to learn it, solidify it in one year. What a blessing you really think about it in that way. I've never heard it articulated like that. I love that it helps you working with a coach and a healer and a mentor that usually has already been through what you're experiencing right now or, you know, some some version of it. It helps you to collapse time because you're gaining the wisdom and the knowledge that they've gleaned from those experiences. And so you inevitably don't have to take 5, 10, 15 years to work through it. You have somebody that gives you, like you said, those codes, that knowledge. Ooh, that, I just want to take a moment there. <laughs> Working with a coach and a mentor and a healer helps you to collapse time. Yes. That is so special. I think it's so beautiful the time that we're in and I always I always have this this um, kind of catch 22 thought of like is it the time that we're in where we're accepting help more and we're choosing to be less like hyper independent or is it because that we live in this realm and we operate in this realm it just seems that way I'm like is the world really changing or is it our world because it's our perspective right um, I'm curious what you think about that I think it's a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. I think mostly the way I'm seeing it in my mind right now is really like a ripple. If you drop a pebble in the ocean or in a lake, whatever, any body of water, the most concentrated ripple is always right where you drop the rock, right? So that's our world, our immediate world. And then it feels really loud. And I get what you mean. Sometimes I go through my Instagram. I'm like, oh my God, everyone's like a healer, spiritual, but that's mm-hmm. just that's just the world that I've chosen to put myself in. But through that, right, our actions, our collective understanding, our collective thoughts, we know that thoughts and beliefs create a reality are actually having an effect on those like outer ripples, right, the larger world at hand, even if we don't immediately see that, it's still having an energetic potential and effect on everyone. Mm. That's so true. You're making an brings us back to the light worker like you're making an impact even if it doesn't feel like it simply by your energy simply by your choices and yeah I do I do believe the world is opening up I do believe that the world is going through an awakening whether it's just like my own personal multiple awakenings or you know as a collective there is this opening to welcoming in help and to mm, to ultimately coming back to to what you do right like coming back to that that village essence, coming back to that community essence, like, you know, you going to the Amazon rainforest and working with the tribes and working with the medicine. I have chills. Like, I believe that we are waking up as a collective to that desire of having that support again, because especially in Western society in the United States, we've been so programmed to just like suck it up, keep going, be in survival. Don't talk about your emotions. Like, Getting help is a form of weakness, but ultimately getting that help, asking for it and receiving it brings you to the level that those mentors and those coaches are at, a level that you would have probably never been able to have obtained by yourself, right? And so my question for you is, what are the most, like maybe if you can pinpoint two or three, the most like impactful things that you have gleaned from working with some of these mentors that have been in your life for years now? Ooh, that's a hard question because there's yeah. so many, <laughs> so many things. I mean, just for context, I've hired relationship therapists. I've worked with vocal coaches, 
psychic development mentors, business coaches, of course. I've worked with energy healers and Akashic record readers, everything and anything. Like I said, it really takes a village. Let me think about this one. What are some yeah. biggest? <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. First one that's coming through is interestingly enough, but really being able to love myself, self love, mm-hmm. and be able to heal all of the programming. And beliefs that said that I wasn't good enough or that I wasn't worthy of love from me or from anyone. That was really profound. And I'm I'm kind of going through this chronologically because at the beginning of my awakening, that was a really heavy theme. I had to really heal a lot of those narrative stories that were keeping me small, that were keeping me from not fully stepping into my power. And I wouldn't like say that there was one teacher that helped me do that. There were many teachers, even some of the ones that I didn't hire, right? More of those karmic connections that you just meet, yet there's profound lessons in just meeting them. The second one I would say lesson is really being able to have courage and reprogram my relationship to fear a hundred percent. Being able to know that fear is really here to keep me safe and that when you work with fear, it actually becomes this tool to show you where you are about to go into a higher level. I love that you said that earlier. Oftentimes your shadows become the loudest as you are about to go back into another peak state. And the last one, let me see. Mm -hmm. Mm. I would say this one came specifically from working with ayahuasca, but and being able to really embody and truly understand who I am. People say this all of the time, like, oh, to know who you really are. But, but I mean, like, really, really know who I really am to the point where I wouldn't even be able to explain to, in words what I've seen or what I've felt. But when I, I can, like, kind of tap back into it and I will say it is love in its purest form, right? Like actual, deep, profound love that echoes into your existence and reminds you as well that you are here to experience everything and anything. And that's part of being a human. Ooh, those are so deep, so profound. (laughs) I think something that would be really, really beneficial to... Um, dissects a little bit more is the self-love and self-worth you know I I think it's something we all deal with and and but when I see you and when I look at you and when I hear you speaking like I can really feel like you always know your power and you always even if maybe there is like a couple thoughts in the back right the shadows like poking you or whatever it may be I feel like you yeah, you do know yourself so well and you do love yourself so much. It like radiates out into the world. It oozes out. Like that's what you're teaching, right? But I find that it's difficult to maintain sometimes, especially when, you know, you you touched on it so well and nobody on the podcast has said this yet. Like the teachers that come in that we're not hiring, right? Those karmics, those lessons, those mirrors, when you're feeling like, everything is great. I know myself. I love myself. And maybe you're alone at that point, right? And then somebody enters your life and it reflects to you those deeper wounds that maybe you weren't acknowledging because you were so in your own energy, right? And so I'm so curious when that really clicked for you, that self-love, that self-worth and how it's an ongoing practice for you to help people with that yes I don't think there was one moment per se where it really clicked I feel like it's been an accumulation of many moments but when I think about what those moments are two themes occur which is beautiful because you already touched upon one it it was in the presence of someone else that really intense mirror for sure And that relationship 
being something that allowed me to go deeper into what they were showing me. And then the second one is, again, this theme of plant medicine. I'm thinking specifically there was there was one, my very first hero dose when I sat with mushrooms. Oh my God, there was so <laughs> much relief. I remember crying, wailing for hours, hours and hours and hours, just wailing, letting that pain of every time I said a mean comment to myself or whatever it was to come out. And then there was another ayahuasca journey where I had where it was the same thing and it was around my body and Mm. that trip specifically helped me heal my body dysmorphia like it was like a light switch after that experience that journey wow I I suffered with body dysmorphia for years like many of us unfortunately Mm. many of us women do Mm -hmm. um but that one journey I was a changed human being so it's been an accumulation of many moments but to maintain the practice, mm-hmm. it's really committing and devoting myself to the practices that I know make me feel good and remind me who I am and remind me these these concepts that I have had these deep, profound moments with. And that's why I am very committed to my morning routine, to carving out mm-hmm. space and time to just be with me and source, right? Whether it's journaling or meditating or even going on a walk I feel like doing that daily is is so key it's so crucial Mm -hmm. because I will tell you the days that I don't do that you you feel disconnected from self you get caught up in the illusion in the outer material world Mm -hmm. and so it's important that you're coming back and and you're carving out time to Mm -hmm. come back into the heart come back into the truth of who you are and wow You've had such a magical life, my girl. Like, I'm just like, uh, yeah, you are that. You are definitely that expander for me. I remember um, as you were saying all of that, I remember like one of the first pieces of content that I saw of yours was like you dancing with the tribes and just like just. Uh, just embodying that love for yourself and not caring and sharing that medicine with with um the world that medicine of like coming back home to the roots of how it all began right and and loving yourself through those processes I mean plant medicine let's let's segue into that because it's also been very profound in my life as well and and many people that have been on this this show um and those two those two moments that you had with the mushrooms and then with the ayahuasca and like healing your body dysmorphia i'm i'm like welcoming that that into my life now that i know that it's a potential right now that i know that it's a a possibility and i'm sure as people are listening they're like okay well if i can heal that part that is not truth that my body is beautiful that you know we're all supposed to be different shapes and different sizes and there is no perfect beauty and you can heal that through plant medicine, through one ceremony, in order to love yourself to that level, that is that is so impactful. So when did plant medicine start coming into your life and, and when were you introduced to it? Yes. So the very first time I worked with plant medicine, I mean, <laughs> let's be real, I did work with marijuana when I was in high school but it wasn't super intentional right (laughs) like let's be real I wasn't doing it in a sacred context and I do believe although I don't work with it anymore I do believe with the right intention it can help you in many ways Mm -hmm. but the first time I sat with mushrooms was actually a full circle moment uh during that five month backpacking trip it was the second or third month in and I was really grateful that I I went through that whole process of <clears throat> meditating first and accessing those states of being without any help so that when I did work with the medicine, I felt like it took me even deeper. Mm-hmm. And so that's when I started working frequently with mushrooms. I mean, even to this day, I, of course, work a lot with ayahuasca, but the moments I'm not working with ayahuasca, I do like to microdose or or work with the mushroom spirit because the mushroom spirit is very gentle. It's very, very loving, very different than ayahuasca. Not that ayahuasca is not gentle, but it's just, you know, Danielle, it's like a, a different <laughs> ball game. And then 
ayahuasca that began in 2021 and that's a wild story of how i ended up in the amazon rainforest with the yoanoa tribe yeah and um yeah i've been working very deeply now with ayahuasca since since then a lot <laughs> let's talk about because i just see like this major transformation at that point in your life right like let's talk about who you were before i have chills right now let's talk about who you were before going on this life-changing adventure which now you're offering to people right um versus who you were when you came out of that and the months like out of that because what I feel is that you were just a life coach right were you just a life coach then and then it transformed yes, or I was, already bu- I was already business coaching sorry I'm trying to interrupt you I got excited oh no, no, no. no I was already business coaching but massive shift in the way that I was that I am now doing business and and what I was perceiving everything and that came from that leg of the journey okay let's let's talk about the the transformation you went into the cocoon right let's talk about those major takeaways after that first retreat and sitting with with the medicine for the first time yeah so before the journey into the amazon I, I had gotten the call. I had always known I wanted to sit with ayahuasca where it was from. And this is just a beautiful reminder to any of you listening. If it's meant for you, it will find you because I could not have made it up how this opportunity ended up in my, in my lap. I'm sure you resonate with this too, Danielle. And before then I was actually living in Costa Rica and I was going through it. In hindsight, I understand why I was going through and having such a rough time because as we already mentioned, your shadows, all of that get the loudest before you're about to slingshot into your next level. And it was rough. I feel like before before that, I was noticing the same patterns coming up in different ways in my relationships, my romantic relationships, in my relationship to my business, all of that. I was burnt out. Even though I was doing amazing, my business was doing so well, I I still wasn't happy. And I'm like, what is this? I thought this was going to be the thing that brought me happiness. And even though I, I, that wasn't on the forefront of my mind, in everyone's subconscious beliefs, you think that once you have the thing that you desire, that it's going to change your state of being when really you have control of changing your state of being at any given moment. So by the time I went on this journey and I sat with ayahuasca for the first time, I'd had all of these things ready to go into ceremony with the intention to finally like overcome it and go into the next level of whatever it was and so I feel like that's exactly what I got oh my god (laughs) we we sat in ceremony I think it was two times we had two ceremonies and wow again I remember just crying for hours and hours and being like thank you god and I remember one of the most profound things I learned from that journey those first two journeys was ayahuasca the spirit clearly showed me that you are always life is always going to be ups and downs like really showed me embody that to my core where if you go through a period of sourness of suffering of intensity it will always 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 be followed by your joy your highest light abundance coming back into the light and so having experienced that in such a deep and profound way afterwards there was this greater acceptance I had with with the times and moments where I would inevitably suffer again full circle moment coming back to the theme we discussed earlier whenever the shadows would get really loud it's been able to help me move through those with so much more ease and grace whereas in the past I would maybe be stuck for six months after that journey it would be two months or a month and a half or three months so really giving me this this remembrance, this opening of the heart, coming back to love, coming back to joy, which is what the Yawanawa are all about. This specific tribe, like their phrase is only joy. It's, it's in Portuguese, it's all alegria, but they talk about that all the time. Uh, reminding you what life is really about, not to take it so damn seriously. We get caught up in the suffering, the law. Like at the end of the day, we're here to have fun. We're here to tap into joy. We're here to connect. 
with people. And I feel like that has forever been ingrained in me and has allowed me to carry that into my business, into the way that I serve people and to the way that I live my day-to-day life. Mm. Wow. Have you ever thought about writing a book? (laughs) (laughs) I have. And honestly, this conversation, I'm a generator. So I I respond off of people and I'm like, girl, I'm gonna have to take notes. There's all these like content ideas. No, there's so much. (laughs) <laughs> there is so much coming through for me this. too yeah there's so much coming through for me too I love that that's why I love these conversations with like you know just with with souls that mirror reflect back like our journeys are of course different and we're different people but there's also so many similarities and there's there's medicine in that which is why I want to broadcast this for there's a lot of light workers and healers doing it alone you know that's why I want to get this out there and and help people to realize, like, just like you said, with light comes dark, like with all of the the beauty comes the pain as well. And and if you're in a moment like that of of suffering or perceived suffering, like it will get better, you know, and you're not alone. And listen to these stories and listen to what we've overcome and what you've overcome and how ultimately it will lead you to that highest timeline, which of course, you're at right now and, and hearing, you know, the impactful story of you in the Amazon with the Yawanawa that obviously prompted you to continue to come back over and over again and work with the medicine, right? So how has that and work with that tribe specifically? And now I believe your your partner is is in the Yawanawa tribe, right? He lives yeah. there and he's yeah. from there and Oh, it's just so beautiful, the life that you live. And so I'm curious how that like evolution has happened for you in the growing of now your own retreats with that tribe and with the the medicine as well. Yeah, it's been quite the adventure. As you mentioned, my partners, Yawanawa, and I will say our love story is a very important part of this unfolding. It's really gone hand in hand with me working with the tribe and working with the medicine. But after I went in July 2021, I then went back in October. So after I had those experiences, I was like, I'm coming back. I received so much clarity in those first two journeys, those two ceremonies that something within me told me you're going to come back a lot. It's like, get ready. (laughs) And I was like, okay, makes sense now because the prophecy was correct. Felt the call. I went back in October, not that long, right after July. And that time I decided to stay longer and do a dieta. So to work a little bit closer with the medicine, stay there a little longer. It was a combo dieta. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with combo then, y'all. Could, but... you, could you explain that a little bit more for yes. Yeah. Yes. So combo is a frog that exists in the Amazon rainforest. And a lot of these tribes, they work with the frog medicine, which is the secretion. It's the milk of the frog. And it is partially not toxic, but it can create an effect that when you work with this medicine which basically you burn it on the skin and then you put the milk secretion on you it can cause you to purge right to 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 vomit it can also help purify your organs and and different things like that and the tribe uses it to hunt because they believe that it makes you more attractive to animals and it increases your agility and ability to go out and hunt for hours and hours during the nighttime so that's why they use it but in many other contexts, it's very powerful for healing your body. It's another spirit that you can work with. It's an animal spirit. So I decided to work with Combo, do the dieta. And then at the same time, you're working with ayahuasca every other day. So it allowed me to go deeper and work with that medicine. Simultaneously, I ended up with with my partner, who's now my partner, we ended up kind of meeting and and connecting during this dieta and we ended up falling in love so there's like a lot of things happening as I'm here it, I was there for a month basically a month and wow. then after yeah and then after that because I made this connection to this man and he asked me to be his girlfriend during this trip I started going back to the village and slowly but surely 
I went so many times. In one year, I went six times back and forth to this village. It, insane. It was like five or six times in the span of a year. And every time I would go back, I started getting closer to the tribe, right? Like getting more connected to them. They started becoming family and they work with the medicine very frequently. So uh, I started working with the medicine even more like every weekend. And so slowly but surely through my romantic connection, I was also able to work with the medicine and get to know the tribe more to the point now his the chief of his village, which is his uncle, I've gotten close to him and he is hosting host ex expeditions in the Amazon. Mm -hmm. And so through us working together, he knows the work that I, that I do. I asked like, would I be able to help contribute and bring people to experience this? Because our expeditions, yes, they're an amazing week long experience, but <clears throat> the contributions are going right back to the village to help them grow their new children's cultural center so it's something bigger than us it's like it's a win-win you know you're you're supporting this village and that's how i got into now co-facilitating these retreats these expeditions we've already done two and now our upcoming one is coming at the end of july and i and i have a group that i'm bringing with me and and i'm so excited because this just goes to show when something is for you, it will find you. I didn't necessarily go seeking any of this. It really just unfolded perfectly. Mm. And that's how you know you're in, a, in alignment. You don't have to go grasping for it. It just works out, right? It, not saying that zero effort is going to get you there. You still need to take action and make things happen, but it just eases and flows and that's what this this whole ayahuasca journey working with the yoanoa has been and i i just want to say i'm very blessed to work with this tribe and to to be so close to them it, it really is an honor and and i feel honored when they say you know hajina you're you're a family i'm like oh, thank you <laughs> yeah i mean they're a pretty well-known tribe like i've seen and heard their name all over and it's it's incredible that the universe just like guided you to this opportunity and from that it was this passion right these life-changing occurrences and healings and then you you met your life partner and now you're you're bringing that medicine like these i believe it's like eight or seven day long retreat yeah to to people now so that they can experience what you experience and of course in a, on a different level but wow that just it's for people that haven't had these like mystical experiences, right? It sounds almost like a fairy tale, like a fantasy <laughs> novel, right? Like you just, it's so beautiful how heavily you guide, you are guided and um, the impact that this medicine has had on you, right? So how frequently would you say you work with these types of medicines and because it, it continues to affect your business and how you show up for your clients, right? So how frequently would you say you work with them? Yeah, so when I'm in the village, I was just there for almost four months. We were working with it almost every single weekend. Now, keep in mind, like every Saturday night is often when they would have ceremonies in the in the village. Keep in mind, not every single time is super deep. I tell people this because different tribes work with the medicine in different ways and different depths and for the yoanawa you can go super deep many people go very deep but you also can keep things a little bit lighter and so oftentimes i would go to ceremony and just take like a microdose but that's still enough to connect to the spirit and to to connect to this this higher intelligence that is the plant and so Many of my ceremonies have looked like that. I would say out of, I, I've i lost count at this point, but I've probably sat any, anywhere between the 30 to 40 mark. I don't even know. But out of all of those, I would say six ceremonies have been super deep. Like out of all of those, those have been like really deep and, and the others in in varying degrees of depth and, and lightness. But yeah, it's been such a privilege. I'm like, I don't think I would have been able to do that unless I had spent that amount of time in the village with them yeah 
Yeah, I think there's something also important to highlight, like, just like you said, they it's in their culture, right? It's, they grew up with this, it's something they do every weekend, if not every week. And that's something I really experienced out here in Colombia is that the, the, the ceremony that I went to, it seemed very like nonchalant, like, oh, yeah, we're drinking ayahuasca, here we go, you know, and it's like, yeah, it's an every weekend thing. And so, of course, for me, it was my first time. And I was like, wait, I'm confused. It's this is, I feel like this is a very big deal. It's very serious. It's very, you know, because it's not, it's not what I grew up with. It's, I decided I wanted to travel to the medicine. You know, I didn't want to sit in the United States. And of course, like you said, the medicine will find you and, and the, the ceremony really just fell into my lap. But that's something to, to highlight for people that are going into this type of experience, like the cultural differences, right? Like it might not be normal to you, but it's normal to them. And this is a medicine that they've worked with their whole lives, you know, and, and it's just embedded into, to their culture. And I think that is definitely something that you can experience and be like, wait, huh? But it's just because you're from a different, you're, you're not from there, right? It's, it's not your roots, it's their roots. And there's so much respect and reverence for the medicine. And also it's, it's a weekly thing really yes it's interesting you say that because I had a similar experience too the more that I started sitting with the tribe I'm like oh this is just like a, another Saturday for them many of them have been working with the medicine since they were really young I mean the youngest I've seen in the village was there was this three-year-old that took like a very I think she was three or four it took like a very tiny amount and the way that they work is they will serve the medicine to a child if the child asks for it. So that child wouldn't ask for it. But it's interesting the more that I've gotten to know them and even asking my partner, they work with the medicine a little bit different than we do. It's a different intention that they use. Not saying that outsiders don't have the same intentions as them, but for the most part, they've told me ayahuasca is a tool for them to learn their songs to connect to their ancestors like my boyfriend will always tell me like oh I'm really excited for the ceremony tonight to connect to the song and the singing whereas I more common I have noticed that outsiders are like I really want to heal this this one thing or this trauma or I have this intention of it's more of like a healing modality I would say for outsiders versus Yes, they use it for healing inside of the tribe. But what I've witnessed, it's more of a tool to connecting to their ancestors, their song, their culture, dancing, things like that. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That difference, that difference definitely helps to have that awareness when you're going into a new experience like that. I have a question for you because obviously both of us really want to offer and shine light on these alternative modalities to healing, right? Like plant medicine, working with the coach, working with the healer, energy work, whatever it may be. And I'm sure you experienced some hesitancy before really investing in something like that or, or really investing in a trip like that. So what would you say to somebody that's that's on that cusp like they know they have the clarity they're being guided to working with someone or working with plant medicine but there's just like I think the inevitable fear that comes with entering into the unknown what guidance would you give somebody Mm -hmm. yeah so is the fear louder than where your soul is guiding you and if it is not louder than you understand that it's just there to keep you safe and you have to have the courage. This is this is the thing. You don't need to be fearless, but you need to be willing to know that by you taking the leap and trusting where your soul is guiding you, you are taking back your power to create whatever reality that you want. And with this, there is so much more depth in you seeing this as an opportunity to rewire your relationship to fear for me, it's been a constant journey and an evolution. And and you might think, oh, you're you're successful. You're doing all of the things. You must not have those moments anymore. That's not the truth. It's that I've been able to make fear my friend and see it as this fear wouldn't be this loud if what was on the other side of it was for me, was meant for me. 
Otherwise, you wouldn't be scared about it. It wouldn't be bringing up so many things because the fear is as the opposite is here to show you all of the things that you need to become in order to go down the path that your soul desires. So be brave, be willing, be courageous. If you know it's for you, you understand that that ROI, that return on the investment is limitless. It is infinite. It is going to make you a better person. It's going to bring you the tools that you need, whatever it is. It is going to serve you in receiving your highest light, going down your highest path. And I always say, if you move first, the universe responds. So as soon as you decide, I'm going to make this happen, it doesn't matter what it takes. For instance, maybe you're investing in the thing, you don't have the money, but you decide to the universe, this is inevitable, I'm going to be courageous, I'm going to be willing, I'm going to make it happen. That's when the universe is like, oh, they're acting in accordance to who they really are, to who they're becoming. And then the universe conspires to make it. That's what happened with my first trip, by the way. I like did not have that much money. You know, it was a sacrifice. I had to make it happen. But I knew, I knew that I had to go for it. I'm like, of course, imagine had I never taken the leap, I wouldn't be where I am right now. And so do it for your future you. (laughs) Oh, that brings up so much for me. It brings up you know, past memories of when I was like 19, 20 years old and I had literally a hundred dollars in my bank account. And I started like eating really healthy because my boyfriend was super healthy at the time. And I started seeing like my body healing. And so with that a hundred dollars, I was like, I need to invest in healthy food. And so I would like this, this sounds so minute, but it was so grand, you know, it back in the day. And starting to invest when I wasn't even ready and when I was like scared shitless because I knew the benefits that I would be receiving for my health, for the betterment of my body, aka the betterment of my entire life. And so it brings up that concept of like, I don't know if you're ever fully going to be ready. You know, I think after you experience it, then you're like, oh, I'm ready for the next one. Right. Or like after you experience it a few times, you're like, I'm ready for the next one. But I don't know before you're about to step into that unknown, like the void, the 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 newness, you're going to feel that, fuck yeah, I'm fully ready. And I think that's something that a lot of us, we struggle with because I hear people holding themselves back so much so for, around so many different things in their lives saying, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. But I think that not readiness is always going to be there when it is something new. And it's like you said, having that courage to just be like, okay, a part of me doesn't feel ready, but the bigger part of me knows this is for me and I'm going to go for it no matter what and realize and train myself to realize that after I step through that fear, what I was perceiving that was going to happen or what I was fearing that was going to happen never actually ends up happening. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. And you hit the nail on the head. You are never going to feel a hundred percent ready. You make yourself ready. Like readiness is an illusion. It's the illusion of the ego wanting to keep you stay the same, like keep you in your current reality. But yeah, you make yourself ready by taking that leap on faith on trust and by being courageous this to live this kind of life the life that we're living Danielle I'm sure you recognize this but it takes a lot of fucking courage (laughs) a lot of courage a lot of devotion but it's so worth it because the more that we do that the more that we show people look it's possible if I can do it you can do it too yeah and those I think like the theme is like obviously the ebbs and flows of life right as well and and honoring like the fear that's coming and honoring what comes after and honoring the cycles and what I really really want to touch on before we talk more about your retreats that you offer and like your offerings is something that I see you do so well and something that I'm still kind of struggling with but I want to embody, I embody in my life, but maybe I just don't embody on social media as much as I'd like is you are so truthful and so honest about where you're at, like about what you're going through. You're like, Hey, you know, woke up, was so tired, 
left in, you know, like you're just so honest about your true, your true nature and what you experience as a human. And I'm curious how you honor that like so gracefully and also simultaneously, like you have this business that is just like blossoming. I'm like, the, the women that I see in the space that you're in as a spiritual business mentor, as an entrepreneur, I see a lot of them operating in hyper masculine, get it done, go, go, go. I don't care about your excuses. Like just keep going, keep going, keep running, keep running until you burn out and then you can never get back up. Right. But you, you have the space and the freedom and the time to honor those rhythms. And I'm so curious, like, how do you do it while still being so fucking successful? Tell me your secret. <laughs> First off, thank you for that reflection. Yeah. Always nice. Of course. You're really good at that. I'm like, your love language, one of them should be, I feel like it's probably words of affirmation. Affirmation really is good at that. Top. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And I love receiving them. So I'm like, all right, match <laughs> made in heaven. I'm like, tell me more. Oh, <laughs> I will. I will. I'll keep going. <laughs> So how do I do it? Well, it's just by being really radically honest with yourself and and accepting that you are also a human, right? Even if you are a light worker and a healer and you have this mission and purpose, it's accepting that you're going to go through human things and also sharing that with other people and revealing. Because we know on social media, there is that mask of, oh, this is everything's perfect, right? It's like the highlight reel. But the more that we have the courage and willingness to share that, knowing that that's not actually going to diminish our reputability or our expertise, but actually enhance it. I mean, look at you. You just said that's something that you admire and in me. And I would consider you, you're my ideal soulmate client. I'm like, yeah. So it so it's working because you can see truth. You recognize when people are putting up a front and it's all bullshit. Right. And so that's the thing about new paradigm business it's finding that balance is realizing that you have to speak to people's souls because they recognize your soul and they see your soul and and mm. doing that is being in your soul and being truthful and open and honest and transparent about where you're at otherwise the exact kind of person that you want to call in they're going to see through the mask they're going to see through the facade that you're putting out into the world. So you really, if you want to attract people from your soul to your soul, these soulmate karmic connections, you have to be operating from that place and recognize that the more that you are identified with your soul being, the more that you share that, that you display that, the more that it does the job of attracting exactly who you're meant to attract. Not one, one, one on the timer right now. <laughs> Yeah, the love it. Universe has um, just sponsored this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just implanting those truth codes back into me because I'll be radically honest here about like getting into TikTok and getting into so social media and putting myself out there more, which has brought me so many soulmate clients and so many beautiful connections. And also, I have gotten stuck in the trap of like old Danny before building the business and like, you know, old me before it was always like, this is me, take it, leave it, whatever. But then getting into social media and having that reflection, whether you're scrolling or you're comparing like unconsciously, consciously, you can very easily slip into that slope of trying to present what is more digestible for others. And what is going to get those numbers and those hits and those views as opposed to being radically honest around who you really are, what you're going through and what you're truly reflecting into this world. And so my question for you is like, does that dance still exist within yourself? And how do you navigate through that? For sure. It definitely exists. I think the part of just living in the modern day and age where we are constantly being shown and you're consuming things on social media. But what has helped me is reducing consumption. That has helped me so much. Mm -hmm. And ayahuasca showed me how much whatever we're watching, 
gets implanted in your subconscious to the point where in one ceremony I was almost like a, on a on a desktop on your computer you can like lasso things and go throw them in the trash I was doing that because there were so many things that I'd seen for like that TikTok a month ago that was still in my subconscious we wow. hold on to all of that so reducing my consumption becoming the creator and not consuming as much has been so helpful so I try my best to stop doom scrolling and things like that or going on Instagram and you get stuck in it, right? So if you eliminate that pattern, it allows you to come back to your truth. There's so much more ease and, and allows your channel to really clear out. So, so you know, okay, is this really me? And then in terms of what you were saying of having that balance of what to say to to get the views up, because there are certain things that you know will work. Bro marketers talk about it all the time. Like, follow this. I have really gone back to this ideology of finding the balance. So having a framework, because it is helpful. As a business mentor, I have experienced it myself. I've seen it within my clients that when you are just intuitively showing up and being yourself, that's great, but it doesn't always sell. It doesn't always do the purpose that you have of bringing people into your world. But if you have a basic framework and this is so on point so I was just filming content yesterday and I talked about this it's like learning basic math when you first go to learn how to do addition when you're a little kid you have to write it out right five plus six you, you write it out you have to really visualize it but you have a framework but then once you learn that framework you can do it in your head you can do it with your eyes closed so same thing about some of those tactics, those strategies that do actually work, using them as a framework, but knowing that the real juice, the real magic is who I am, is who I am being. So being able to mirror that to the point where it comes very clear, what are the little shifts I need to do to make sure that, yeah, this does get seen by the right person and that it does bring someone into my world and, and has them turn into a client has been really helpful. Mm -hmm. So you have that masculine that you still, of course, like bring into your business. I'm assuming, let me know if this is true. You have systems, you have funnels, you have all of those things in place that help your business kind of operate mechanically. And that helps you to show up more in your feminine, in your truth, because you have that foundation that you built for yourself. Is that is that true? Mm -hmm. Yes, you hit the nail on the head. And that's how I teach people how to create multiple six-figure businesses. It's with that balance. The masculine to hold the feminine, the structure to hold the creativity. However you want to describe it, it's all of the same thing. That makes sense because I do find I do find with healers and with, you know, coaches like women coaches, people that are very much want to live their life in the flow and attracting and magnetizing that structure is there's a lot of resistance in building that because it's like time and it's logical and it's you know it's it feels like a little bit kind of in a box instead of being in our mastery which is our creativity right so how long did it get you to lay those foundations and how long does it get you to assist others in laying those those masculine foundations to help build yeah. that. So I feel like it's been this entire journey of having this business, which has been about three years now. But I've gone through periods of leaning much more heavily on the masculine and then leaning much more heavily in the feminine. And I feel like that has served me so much because how can I know what true balance is unless I've visited the extremes of both? So at the beginning, I was way more masculine about things. To the point where I was feeling burnt out and overworked, all of the symptoms that happen when you go too right. much in that part of you. And then I went way too much in the feminine and it was great. I was creative and I was expressing myself, but then my business took a hit. Like the sales took a huge dip. I'm like, what's going on here? So it really has required going and learning both, right? That, that balance between them. We will go full circle and bring everything back to what you really want to talk about today, like what you're really excited about in your business and how you're working with your clients right now. 
Yes. So right now my business is going through some massive changes in the best way possible. But what I'm most excited about are a couple of things. So our upcoming Amazon expedition in the Yawanoa Village. So that's happening end of July to, well, it's July 28th to August 7th. And I already have a great group coming together, but there still are some spots open. And then I do have my mastermind, which is my signature offer. It's called Becoming Mastermind. And that's where it's for spiritual entrepreneurs who want to scale to 10 to 20K months through most of the things that we already discussed, being in balance, tapping into your spiritual channel and creativity, and while staying authentic to you and who you really are. And it's it's a mentorship experience. It's not a program. It's really where we do life together, where we go on this journey. But I absolutely love it. My clients crush it. it. It's so incredible just to see how much people are rewiring all of the old like burnout, you have to hustle work mentality and, and, and hitting the 10K to 20K month experience and having these massive shifts. Oftentimes people tell me my clients say that the biggest shift is that they feel closer to God, to spirit more than ever through that experience mm-hmm. and that they have the thriving business to match. I'm like, all right, boom, job well done. And I do have an upcoming marketing experience that I'm creating for Starseeds, Lightworkers and Healers. I'm actually dropping that this Thursday. Um, so that is going to be incredible. It's called Silver to Gold. And it's going to be a deep dive on how to energetically and strategically up level your marketing with the purpose of you calling in your soulmate clients, selling out your launches and creating consistent sales. Because ultimately, we know that's going to help you continue serving your purpose and doing what you came here to do. Yeah, those are the big things going on. But anything else you guys can check out on my website, HeginaOsilva.com. That's R-E-G-I-N-A-O-S-I-L-V-A.com. Yes. And I will definitely link it in the show notes. I am curious though, the mastermind, like what does that look like? Is that a consistent group meeting? Is it on lot? Like what is, what does that really look like specifically? Yeah. So as I said, it's really us doing life together. So you're in a group chat where Tuesday through Friday, I'm interacting, answering your questions. We're in there having the best time of our lives, posting pictures, getting support on the day to day that happens inside a business because there are things that are going to come up that you don't have a training for, right? It's it's life unfolding. It's life unha- um, life happening. And then on top of that, you also get access to my entire VIP library, which is jam-packed with so many programs, so many workshops, tools to help you implement more of the masculine, yes, but also some of these energetic principles. I mean, you were inside of Activate. That was one of my my hit programs. You get access to all of those programs. And then on top of that, we meet three times a month. So we are getting those live calls and you get access to all upcoming masterclasses, programs that I drop like that marketing one that I just talked about, Silver to Gold, my my mastermind gets instant access to it. So it is a really hands-on, full-on, all-encompassing experience. Beautiful. So the mastermind, the Silver to Gold marketing um course and then the retreat that's coming up in the end of july in the amazon rainforest of brazil with the yawanawa tribe it's so so beautiful and so amazing to hear more of your story and how much you continue to prioritize your work your inner work your inner world your self-love your connection to source and god and and then you help others and inspire others to do that within themselves it is so beautiful to witness and again to hear more details of your story um i'm so grateful for your time and your energy i i also put my my guest on the spot with the last question that i ask them um and that (laughs) and that question is and i want you to just like sit with it for a minute and just give yourself some time to answer of course as you do if you could say one thing to the whole entire world and it will be broadcasted into everyone's ears into everyone's minds and plant a seed that would change them for the better this planet for the better what would you say wow you really are putting me on the spot that's such a tough question (laughs) you've been throwing these left to right okay let me sit with it wow what would i say you're doing great Uh, 
<laughs> this feels a little cliche, but I really would just want people to know this. It's at the end of your life, what are you actually going to remember? What are the things that will play inside of your heart, inside of your mind before you die? But whatever that is, focus more on that because that's the direction that you're meant to lean into. Oh, I'm going to let that sink in for me as well. <laughs> Thank you. That was so beautiful. Thank you so much for your medicine and your energy. And again, let's just like shamelessly plug your website and all of your handles. I know I'm pretty sure they're all the same, but go ahead and plug them one last time. Mm -hmm. So my website, you guys already know, HeginaOsilva.com and same on Instagram and TikTok, Hegina Osilva. Again, R-E-G-I-N-A-O-S-I-L-V-A. Go say hi. If you guys listen to this, I would love to know who's out there listening and yeah i can't wait to see what happens from this podcast this has been so good yes yeah that was that was potent that was mm -hmm. potent mm -hmm. pure magic so again thank you so much and thank you to all the listeners for listening again to the limitless being podcast you can also go check me out and yell dot limitless being on all platforms and Limitless Being Podcast on Instagram and TikTok. If you enjoyed this episode, like, share, follow, subscribe, spread this energy far and wide and enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you next week. Bye.